guys. All right, let's look connect here. All right, today is March 31st, 2024, Easter Sunday here in the United States. And uh, yeah, so happy Easter, happy walking dead finale day of the ones who live. So obviously, guys, we're going to talk about the episode, but no spoilers for the first 15 minutes. Keep it general, keep it other topics, other things, other shows, other movies, whatever. You can talk about other stuff and the ones who live that we're going to talk about anyway, but not the latest recent most episode. There's going to be a lot of spoilers. So I'm sure if you don't want to know spoilers, I would stay off social media <laughs> for like any wa any Walking Dead stuff, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, anywhere, because I'm sure it's everywhere. I'm sure what happens in the episode is everywhere. So, but just be careful if you're worried about spoilers. I'm not. I watched the episode twice. It's very good. And uh, yeah, we'll get into that. Don't worry. So like I said, happy Easter to everyone that celebrates it here in the United States. And um, yeah, hopefully you're safe and sound, staying warm, staying cool, wherever you're at. Just... Um, Interesting to talk about, you know, of course, The Walking Dead. And so tonight is the finale of The Ones Who Live. It was already on AMC Plus. But tonight, I think there's a movie, a movie, a show called Parish or something. As that's, we're going to get, let's see what it says. I have a picture, a screenshot. So is The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon, The Book of Carol, exclusive look today during Parish on AMC. So not during The Ones Who Live, during, I'm guessing, the next uh, show that's after The Ones Who Live, when we're going to get a first look of that. I'm sure it's going to be on AMC, AMC Plus, all that stuff, YouTube, everything there. It's going to be, you know, all around. So we'll have to see what it means going forward. So that's the next show, because The Ones Who Live Six episodes, done. No word if we're going to get a season two, but more on that later. Daryl Dixon, season two, The Book of Carol, comes out June, July, sometime this summer is the word. No release date yet. Maybe we get a release date tonight. Maybe we just get a first look. Maybe it just says summer 2024, but okay, so it's the 31st of March. And then we have April, May, June. So that's like three months, you know, maybe two and a half months until we get any Walking Dead stuff too. And, you know, it's definitely something that I'm excited to see where the future goes of things because it feels like there's still Walking Dead story left to be told out there. I don't know how much, right? And again, we'll get in more on that later. But I can't. I, I had to be careful what I say now because of the um, just keeping it spoiler free for the first fifteen minutes. So, um, my wife and I we watched uh, Madam Web, and it's not a good movie by any means, but it's not a terrible movie. It's not the worst Marvel movie I've seen. Well, it's not Marvel, is it? It's Marvel. So I know it's Sony, but. It's uh, it's not good, but it's not good. It's not it's not super bad. You know, there's been bad Marvel movies before, and you know, it just feels like an incomplete movie. So I would wait, wait, wait on that. Something to watch down the road as well, too. So, but uh, we watched that. We were watching. Uh, there's four episodes of Quiet on the set. Or quiet on set or whatever it's the documentary about the Nickelodeon craziness there with uh, Dan Snyder and all that and all these shows that were on Nickelodeon and uh, allegedly what happened and this and just just the not not good stuff just not good anything like it, there's nothing good about any of these things that are happening there and whether it believed or not or two so um, it's just like pretty terrible you know the kids people need to be protected especially in something that is in young kids you know so you know it's just 
it's just terrible you know what if, even if a certain percentage of stuff happened on I, I don't know what to make of it on there too but i saw some report about that a while ago about it but you know i'm watching uh not really watching too much other tv what are you guys watching rob cases i watched godzilla vs kong last night it was mostly forgettable well that sucks like i don't know how i feel about king kong and or godzilla and then them together fighting each other. Like, I, I don't really care too much about that, too. You know? I, I don't, <laughs> it's entertaining, and that's what it comes down to. But it's a giant silverback gorilla. And it's a giant dinosaur. I don't even know what Godzilla is. Like, what is, what is Godzilla? But it's entertaining. It's a following. It's been a thing like that, too. Um, you know what I am really enjoying? I love X-Men 97, and I got to talk about that because I really enjoy X-Men, the cartoon from the 90s, and X-Men are my superheroes. That's what I like. That's who I like. You know, I, that's what I grew up with. I have some of the comics, but mostly I grew up with the cartoon, Fox, Saturday morning cartoon, and it was great. And this is a continuation of that. And yeah, some of the voice acting like Rogue is a little... Ugh. And I believe that uh, Ross Marquand is the voice of Professor Xavier. I saw that somewhere, and I don't know if it's true or not. But Ross does... Uh, he plays Aaron on The Walking Dead. And uh, yeah. So I'm enjoying X-Men 97. If you haven't seen it yet, and you like the X-Men stuff, definitely find a way to watch it, and uh, it's awesome. Sailor Moon can beat X-Men any day. Well, I, I don't know about Sailor Moon, but I know about X-Men, and uh, it's pretty awesome. It's a great cartoon. Um, we're watching another show. I don't know if you guys know on Netflix. There's a show called Louder Milk, and we're on season three. I think there's three seasons. And it's uh, Ron Livingston is the actor, the main actor that, that plays Sam Loudermilk. And it's a good show. Like, it's a different but same kind of show. And if, you, if you're looking for something to watch, and he's got this, like, sarcastic, dry sense of humor. And a lot of craziness stuff ensues in the story. But it's entertaining. Um, if you like Ron Livingston at all, if you know him from uh, Office Space and I don't know where else he's really known for, but Office Space mainly. Um, it's good. It's good. It's a good show. Like Louder Milk is what it's called on Netflix. And uh, March Madness is going on still. I'm a Duke fan, even though I didn't take them to get past Houston. But I wish I did now because that would probably have been a great pick. And I see if they're going to beat NC State. I would love to see that now too. Band of Brothers. I think he was on there too. Yeah, you're Rob. You're right, Rob. But again, I haven't really seen Band of Brothers. I know like Michael Cutlets is on there, and people are on a bunch of people are on there too. So. And um, yeah, I know Lindsay. He, he was he was on Sex in the City. My that's what my wife said too. But I didn't really watch that show, so I don't really know much about that too. So, but um, he's uh, I like Ron Livingston. So if you want to check out his show again, you know Louder Milk on uh, Netflix. So other than that, you know my I got to talk talk about my uh, grad school Nova Southeastern that's in Davie, right outside of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Lost the Division II National Championship yesterday. They lost to Minnesota State. And um, I was watching the game, and they didn't play very well at all. And they only lost by three points. So if they hit a couple shots here and did a little bit throughout the game, they probably would have won. But Minnesota State won. And they're the first team since 1980, or the first school since 1980, whatever, that has won a men's and women's national championship the same year, and that since 1980-something. So Minnesota State has uh, won that here too. So uh, No, I don't watch the XFL. I I'm not going to watch the UFL or the XFL or whatever. I like having a break from football right now. Like, I like that. I don't need constant football. I don't care about any of this nonsense of XFL, UFL, any of this stuff. I, I just – I like transitioning from stuff to stuff. Like, right now – it's baseball season just started. Basketball is going to be, you know, what's March Madness for college basketball. But then the NBA, hockey, all that stuff, playoffs, 
the NFL, you, you can do that stuff too. You can worry about that later on. I'll watch some of the draft in April and whatever, and then pick it up over the summer when we're there too. You know, I don't, you know, this spring football stuff just makes little to no sense to me too. So Isaac says world beyond was pointless after this. Yeah, I mean, it really was, It really is. You know, like, so the spinoffs, so we have The Walking Dead, and The Walking Dead was one of the biggest shows ever. It's going to go down as one of the biggest shows ever. You know, it just it just really was. It changed, you know, television, cable television. And then they were like, more is better. Let's go see Fear the Walking Dead. That's had its moments, but very far in between overall waste of time for eight seasons. Get the heck out of here. Then they're like, let's do World Beyond. 20 episodes. What did we get out of World Beyond? It was to show us CRM, to show us that whole world there. So we found out that the CRM is terrible. Major General Beale is terrible. They basically just want to exterminate everybody. They killed the campus colony. They killed Omaha. It took a group of four teenagers and a couple other people, but really took down a whole thing. Like it's so laughable because world beyond. So if you are the greatest military in the world, yeah. Have checks and balances and don't let people go wherever they want and don't do this and have security measures and have that. You know, it's just like so laughable with some of the things they were doing. And I, I don't know what the heck was going on with that, but, you know, it was stand by me in the Walking Dead universe is what World Beyond felt like. And it had its moments, but overall, it's just so dumb. Like, it's a waste of time. Like, okay, in World Beyond, what really happened? We saw Jadis, which is like, okay, great. And then we had the kids, Hope, Iris, Silas, and Elton, Dr. Bennett. We had the A's and B's kind of explained. It's still never really been super explained at all. Like, it's, okay, we had more stuff with Okafor saying that A's are leaders and they're killed and they're this and B's are workers and whatever. So it's basically type A, type a is a leader and they exterminate you. You get rid of that. They get rid of all their stuff. And B's were people that they can mold, they could work with. They could do their stuff too, right? And so the A's became test subjects and this and that, and they were trying to work on this and whatever. And we found out a little more information about that stuff again, but we'll talk about the uh, finale in uh, give me uh, two minutes. But World Beyond kind of was a waste of time. Tales of the Walking Dead, waste of time. Like had their moment. They're entertaining, but you know, I think all of us here and a lot of people hold the walking dead universe in high regard you know like it's so high from what it was that we are hoping for answers and we're looking for everything even the smallest little detail we want explained like people still talk about heath still talk about stuff and you're like okay it makes no difference like who cares about heath it's it's a throwaway character. And again, the show is the show. The comic is the comic. And there's differences and stuff there too. And the spinoffs are the spinoffs. And there's all this speculation of all the stuff that's happening. And this happened on their show too. So, you know, it was kind of cool to see Father Gabriel last week. And it's always cool to expand the universe. What's familiar to us. But it's not real. It's fiction. Zombies aren't real. They're fiction. The story is fictional, but it's kind of crazy for them to have all these walkers still around and all this stuff to happen at this point, even so many years after the start of the zombie apocalypse. And so, you know, it is what it is, the show, spinoff, the universe, but we'll have to see what happens with Daryl because Dead City, I think, is going to be an outlier show with Negan and Maggie and this, especially because like Negan and Maggie were connected with Herschel. But now that stuff's resolved. Like, who cares? 
Like they really have some, they need to have some really interesting writing that draws us back in. As for Daryl, that can connect the dots a little bit more. And Daryl, Daryl and Carol will do much more, even if the writing is mediocre, than Negan and Maggie, in my opinion. Just because Daryl and Carol are like, you know, two of the best characters in the Walking Dead universe too. So, all right, guys. So, spoilers, spoilers. We're going to talk about the episode, 15 minutes, spoiler stuff. If you stop watching now, if you don't want to know, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin it for you guys at all because um, it's a good episode. It's a good finale. Is it great? I don't know, but that's a matter of perspective. So, again, spoiler, 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 spoilers. So, okay. So, the episode starts with Rick and Michonne talking, and then Rick and Michonne going to the Cascadia base. And there is like the plan is to go get the dossier, which is so funny. It's like a fancy term for like notes, <laughs> papers, <laughs> dossier. Like it's just hilarious. But either way, there, Michonne is going to go get the paperwork. Rip it up, shred it up, burn it up, get rid of it. Rick's going to go in, get the echelon briefing, and then they'll be out. As the plan. So Rick goes to the front gate, has his hands up, got the wound on his head. They take him in. Michonne sneaks in and away too. And like the walker that chases Michonne is walking way too fast. And then it slows down. You're like, yeah, that person really didn't know, whatever. But Michonne also like hops up a tree and jumps up the thing really fast and either way, but she gets inside and she gets inside Warrant Officer Stokes' room. And she goes into the room and there's all these paintings and all this stuff. And I have to talk about the red little object painting that's, that stands out a little bit. And Michonne's looking all over for it. She finds this cat wire statue thing and she finds the uh paperwork the dossier that's in there she opens it and there's all these notes about alexandria and rick grimes and this and that and blah 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 and uh she rips it up 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 and then picks up the ripped up pages and takes them with her she doesn't burn it she doesn't flush it she doesn't eat it she doesn't do whatever with it but she takes it with her and as she's about to leave her foot gets kind of in the way of something that slid under the door. And the person is like, uh, Officer Stokes, are you in there? And she opens the door and uh, Michonne takes that person out. And I have to admit, like all the people in the area, they're all dressed the same. They all have the, the black CRM gear, the helmets, the red, the this, the that. There's red all over the place. And hey, the red theory strikes again because everybody dies except Rick and Michonne. They are the ones who live. Right? So, but it kind of jumps a little bit to what Michonne's doing, what Rick's doing, them talking in the cabin, coming up with a plan, working together, blah, blah. kind of jumps around a little bit. But, so Rick is, uh, you know, debriefed and talks to Thorne. Who I have to admit, like, Thorne, to me, was, like, a throwaway character. The accent was a little too much at times. And I've heard the South African accent. I've watched District 9 and other people that talk with the South African accent. And I thought they were fine. The way Thorne was talking seemed unnecessary. And they always had this little walk and talk and walk and talk. And, you know, it's definitely something that um, I feel like, because it was supposed to be the Rick movies and Michonne wasn't supposed to be involved early on, I'm guessing. And so when they were writing things, I'm guessing Thorne was the one that was going to help Rick. But Thorne was rewritten. I'm This is just a guess and thought process of that. She was rewritten to be kind of helpful, but not. And it just kind of misses the mark. That's just how I, how I take it too. So... Michonne is doing her thing while Rick talks with Thorne and then goes talk goes to talk with Major General Beale. Major General Beale is killing walkers outside by the fence. 
And he's like, I never had to do this before. I never had this. I never had to do my citizenship because I started this and I did this and I'm from Pittsburgh and I'm this. And the sword that takes lives bring or whatever. He had the same line. He probably says it at least three, four, five times. The sword that takes lives gives lives or whatever the, whatever the phrase that was. But it doesn't matter because he's killed by the sword that saved his life. Rick kills him. So Michonne is walking around. She picks up a, te- a, a bunny, a stuffed bunny. And it made me think of Teddy Bear Girl, but also Judith. And I'm guessing they were having the toys ready because their plan was that Michonne sees is to take out Portland, but to rescue the kids. Save the kids but kill the people or kill the adults in Portland. Sounds a lot like what they were doing on Fear the Walking Dead with the stupid things with Madison and whatever like that too, right? Kill the parents or take the kids away and do that. So, all right, so they're they're having a little common thing with that. The writer's room was like, hey, let's keep the kids and get rid of the adults. Right. So... And again, there's little things that just were kind of laughable in the episode, but they wrapped it up. They decided to wrap it up. Limited series, six episodes. That's what it was. And this was the sixth episode. So Michonne goes in to watch the mandatory thing that we watch, that the person is presenting the material about Portland and the kids and the extraction zones and all the stuff we saw in the trailer. At the same time, Rick is talking with Major General Beale. So Major General Beale, it's a close-up of his face, and he's like, uh, put your gun on the table. Put your prosthetic with the knife on the table. Basically, get rid of all your weapons. Even though he still has a knife on him, Rick, Major General Beale is just like, what are you doing, bro? Like, pat him down, no weapons in the room. Like, come on. But Major General Beale puts the sword on the table and puts the prosthetic on the table and puts everything on the table and has this whole big thing. And it's basically the way to have Rick remember things. Because, again, it's like the fa- this is the finale of, like, the Rick story kind of a deal, it feels like. And he's like, what was the most dangerous time that you did to save your loved ones? And he thinks about sacrificing or killing Shane, taking out the Terminus people, and ripping off the claimer's throat and all that stuff too. And he's like, the the craziest thing I did was I bit someone's neck to save, you know, Michonne and, and Carl. Coral. And it was like, well, imagine you didn't have to do that ever again. Right? <laughs> so they talk about this, talk about all this stuff. Major General Beale talks about he's from Pittsburgh and he was in this and he was in the, he was in Vietnam and he came home and then he did this and his father broke his his nose or something and then or broke his jaw and then he went to go work at a VFW and then went to Vietnam twice and then came back home and was from Pittsburgh and talked about all these things right so they're basically saying he's he's like I've done this echelon briefing two thousand three hundred and whatever times. And you're like, wow, that's a lot of people that you told this information to. But it just happens to be the day before you're going to attack Portland. So did you have, I I don't know. But the echelon intel, echelon briefing, echelon whatever, is that who can he trust on there too? And and it's pretty crazy that that Major General Beale, uh, I don't think there's going to be a season two, personally, just especially the way they ended. But we could see Rick and Michonne again, and I'll tell you where I think we should see them. But more on that later. So the idea is that Major General Beale is recruiting Rick to be the leader of the future. The next 10 years or whatever or whatever is going to be Rick Grimes. He can lead. And he, he left and he sacrificed so much and he did this, but he's still here and all these good things, right? And Rick's just like trying to read on there too. And I have to point out the big giant red picture in the room in Major General Beale's office. And then he dies in the same episode. So Red Theory strikes again for Major General Beale. But we always thought that Major General Beale would either die in the episode, in the final episode, or survive to continue on for the next things. But he died either way. And then Thorn, the same thing. She died as well. So Major General Beale, they're talking, talking, talking. And they talk about the sword again a million times. Put a lot of emphasis on the stupid sword. 
and on the table and Okafor, you flash back to when Okafor said, when the sword is there, don't hesitate, don't do this. And Rick hesitates, but he has a knife out. And Major General Beale's like, you son of... And he's trying to reach for his gun. And, he, and Rick throws his knife at Major General Beale. He grabs his prosthetic, puts it on his uh, residual limb. And then they fight. And he did this. And boom, elbow, boom, punch, this, that, boom. Major General Beale drops the sword. Uh, Rick picks it up and goes to stab Major General Beale. And Major General Beale puts his hand up, goes right through his palm. They love to do that on this uh, Walking Dead universe. Stabs through his hand. And then stabs Major General Beal in the heart, kills him. So um, Rick grabs his radio. And before that, uh, Michonne tried to call Rick on the radio kind of a thing. And he turns it off and he lies and says it's Thorn. And then he says that Thorn, uh, Rick calls Thorn over the radio. And she, they answer back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. They talk. And so he lies and says that uh, Major General Beal was going to go outside and be alone. So then Thorne goes there, and Major General Beale's not outside, so she knows something's up. What are you What are you up to, Grimes? Grimes. And the way she says, like, Rick and Beale, Beale, like, the way she says it is kind of laughable. But, um, so Michonne is going to leave, because she's got the information. Her, 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 her thing was to leave, because she got the intel, she's got the information, she got the paperwork, got all that stuff. Bring back Madison. What do you want to bring back back Madison to? She came back on Fear the Walking Dead. She's not a Walking Dead character. She was already brought back. What are we talking about here, too? So Rick puts Major General Beal in one of the little containers. And then, like, not, not little containers, but the roller container things. Gets on the uh, elevator. Someone comes in the elevator. There's blood dripping out of it. I don't know how it would be dripping out because it would be solid. It'd be like a cooler, like it wouldn't be dripping out, but it is anyway. It's slow and dramatic up the elevator to the sixth floor. The guy and Rick fight. Rick ends up killing the guy, bashing his uh, his face, but he becomes a walker still. And um, Rick, and as the elevator comes down, it comes back up, and Michonne's on it. So Rick and Michonne talk about what to do because their plan was to, to leave. And so they decided not to. They have to stop things because they got to stop CRM from killing Portland because Major General Beale was going to do this. But then Rick told Michonne the plan was for Michonne to leave, to go back to the CRP, tell everyone about it, tell everyone the plans, relay the information that was going to be there and basically sell everyone out because they were going to fly back and do all that. But they don't. They decide to blow up the CRM in the Cascadia base and they do. And everyone dies but Rick and Michonne. And uh, so Rick and Michonne come up with a plan because they have all the different uh, chlorine gas canisters and things on there too. And Rick and Michonne tie up all these frag grenades all over the place that she learned how to do that from uh, Nat. And there's nice little callbacks throughout the, the throughout the series and everything too. And so as they're doing that, like Don says, zero checkpoints of security, right? So like there's no one guarding all the chlorine gas containers and there's no one guarding any of this stuff. So Rick and Michonne just go in there, set up the booby traps, do all this stuff. No one's guarding anything. Everyone's sitting at the, uh, the chairs and does, <laughs> it's just like, what are we doing? But either way, this is the way, this is the route they went. So Rick and Michonne, um, have two walkers. One of them is Major General Beale. And the other one is the guy that Rick uh, killed in the elevator. And so they tie him up with the wire and they're going to like walk around, walk around, walk around, and then eventually pull all the grenades, blow up the canisters and everything's going to blow up. So as Rick and Michonne are leaving the tent, Thorn is there. And she's the Thorn in Rick's and Michonne's side, but um, bunts. But... Thorne just gets annoying, and she's like, what did you do, Rick? What is Bill? What's this? What's that? And it's like kind of crazy. And you're like, come on. So they're like, you can undo it. And as they're walking around, they're slowly walking. Major General Beale comes out, and Thorne freaks out. But with Major General Beale coming out, that blows up all the canisters. Rick and Michonne somehow go into 
protect mode with they cut this water container thing and they put the tarp and throw it over them with the water dripping on them i don't know either way it uh protects them and there's water dripping on them too and everyone dies except for thorn so it's thorn rick and michonne that are left alive here thorn magically survived the major huge blast no idea how she has a she has a gas mask on because remember the chlorine gas burns and whatever. Michonne leaves Rick to fight <laughs> um, Thorn. He has a little like thing over his mouth. His eyes would be burning though from the gas and whatever. But that is what it is. Um, deny or deny. Michonne puts a mask on and she has Major General Major General Beale's sword that Rick gave to her previously. And they fight back and forth, uh, Rick and Thorn. They fight. It's, it's not like a big, huge fight scene, but it's decent. And the uh, Michonne comes and kind of helps Rick. And Rick gets swarmed by walkers. And he's, like, fighting him off. He doesn't have his prosthetic hand, by the way. And that's how uh, he leaves it in the room, which is kind of weird. But he leaves it in the room. And that's how Thorne knows that something's off too, that they were there in the room and doing stuff or whatever. But Rick's fighting off these walkers, and there's a bunch of them, like five, six, seven. Oh, they're, they're all the you know the CRM soldiers that are in the gear, and the helmets are off and whatever, and they're coming at Rick. And Rick's fighting them off, fighting them off, fighting them off. And Michonne is fighting uh, Thorne now with the sword. And so the same sword kills Major General Beale and Thorne. And so she uh, killed them, and or she stabs Thorn in the chest kind of thing. And Rick um, is in trouble. He kind of falls in between these containers. And uh, Michonne's like, where is he? Where is he? And Thorn's like, behind you. Or look behind you or whatever. And so she t- or turn around, or she says. And Michonne turns around, and we see Rick fighting these walkers off still, pulls a pin of her grenade and boom, these two grenades or whatever go off. And Michonne's like, <gasps> and then comes back after, the, I guess, set up for the commercial break kind of thing. And Michonne <laughs> looks and Michonne sees that Rick's okay. There was enough walkers behind or in front of Rick to absorb the blast. Rick's covered in blood like he usually is. And... You know, kind of like Rosita got bit on the back, but Rick doesn't get bit. So Rick and Michonne go over to Thorn. Thorn's like, Major General Beale was wrong, not Okafor. Blah, blah. And she gives him her mask, and, ma- and Rick puts the gas mask on. They get away, and they're fighting the walkers off now. Rick knocks a walker down, takes the gun, and shoots a bunch of walkers. And again, there's like a bunch of, you know, walker soldiers now. Kind of reminds me like the prison with those two riot, gu- riot gear walkers a little bit, but there's like way more of them here. And Rick and Michonne are trying to figure out how to go and do this, and they're fighting them off. Michonne does something kind of funny. She like knocks down one of the walkers and then uses it as like a step stool to like step up onto a shipping container. So she's like, boom, knocks it up, climbs up the guy and jumps up and does there too. Rick's fighting off the walkers, fit and runs out of bullets on the gun, knocks the one walker down, jumps up, has one hand, because again, his left hand doesn't exist, and he's reaching up, and somehow Michonne pulls him up, and he's okay. And now they're safely on top of one of the shipping containers. And then they're safe. So everyone else dies, and then you hear the voiceover work of the military did this and blah 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 and now they're going to do this and now the crc which is the civic republic council because again remember there's a civic republic that's like the government and the crm is a civic republic military there's a council and there's a military and now they just are like due to this this is going to change people are allowed to come and go and freely do this what have you been doing for all these years? Why couldn't people just leave? So it's like so rushed and jump the gun and just they don't really go into thorough explanation of things. They're like, oh, Rick and Michonne killed everybody at the base and Major General Beale's gone and everyone else is there is gone. And so now it's all good. So it's, um, you know, Rick and, Mich- Rick and Michonne are uh, 
just on this helicopter and you see Michonne is wearing the, you know, wedding band that Rick gave her and Rick is like nervous and he's like tapping his hand because he's nervous. The next scene is you see it's Judith has the Rick's gun and we just see like her butt and like a leg with the radio sitting next to the piece of concrete. And you hear Michonne, and she's like, Daito, this is Shoto, Shoto, Daito, whatever, whatever the names are for them. Short sword, long sword. And she, uh, then we see, we don't see Judith's face, so it's probably just a stand-in. And she grabs the radio. And then you see uh, this kind of walkway thing, and uh, you see it's Judith and RJ, and they're walking down this platform. The back of the helicopter comes down, and Rick and Michonne walk out of it. Michonne runs over to Rick to RJ and Judith. It's a nice touching moment. It's reunite. It's a reunion that we wanted to see. So it ends with Rick, Michonne, RJ, and Judith coming together. Judith is Kaylee Fleming. RJ is the same actor, so it's the same good continuity of everything that we know and love. Um, they found the brave man. Michonne says that Judith told her to do it and blah, 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 blah. And um, so, you know, they're doing their thing. And Mich- Michonne is happy to see her kids. And Judith um, hugs Rick. And that's probably been a long time since Kaylee Fleming has seen Rick or see Andrew Lincoln. You know, because like, Andrew Lincoln went away in season nine, episode five and stuff. So, like, I, I don't know how much they got to interact over the years. But... That was pretty awesome. And um, RJ doesn't know Rick. But it's the nice little moment where you're like, this is your father. And it's good because RJ says, you know, you're the brave man. And he says, yep. And he goes, yeah, I knew you would come. How'd you know that? Because he believed, you know, he believed that he would see his dad and meet his dad. And he's like... You can call me the brave man or you can call me dad. And it's a nice little moment. You know, tear, tears roll up into your eyes and you're like, you know, Andrew Lincoln sells it. Denai Guerrero sells it like they're their kids, you know. And it's just like really touching. And Andrew Lincoln does a great job. Denai Guerrero does a great job. Kaylee and I don't know the RJ actor, but they do they do a great job. They just do like a thing. And it's, and it's a nice little moment because RJ's hat is the uh, sheriff hat. The classic hat that was Rick's, Carl's, Judas, now RJ's is like turned and it looks like so bad. And then Rick fixes it. He's like, yeah, it's like, and it's like, it's like good little, like little things like that were great. And um, yeah, they all hug. The camera pans out a little bit. And then you see CRM helicopters going in to deliver like food or, or whatever. And um, there's like four helicopters that go, and that's the end of the end of the show. So it ends with Rick and Michonne going home. So we weren't sure, and I'm glad I didn't know exactly how it ended. I watched it how it ended. Like I would have wrote it myself, just so Rick would never have to play, or Andrew Lincoln would never have to play Rick Grimes again. That he dies, but he survived. So I think. That Rick and or Michonne, both of them, honestly, should be there to greet and meet Daryl and Carol when they finally come home from France. Most likely in season three. And that's where we can get the Rick and Daryl reunion. And if we don't, that's a super missed opportunity because... Rick and Daryl need to be reunited. And and all you have to do is you can have a one-day shoot. It can be... Half a day. You have Rick, Michonne, Morgan, welcome Daryl and Carol back to the Commonwealth. Done. Finn. Over. Roll credits. Walking Dead Universe is over. Because the way they left it now is that I guess it was Carol when it broke up that Carol said to the person or people that Carol might have said on the radio could have been Rick and Michonne. That they came back. And it fits 
maybe the timeline. Like, I don't know. Like, the timeline's all over the place, but it could work. And either way, Daryl and Carol need to survive. They ain't going to die. They need to be at the very end. And they better not die in some France location. Come on, get out of here with that. Daryl and Carol need to make it back home. We need to have our reunions. We got our RJ, Judith, Rick, and Michonne reunion. First meeting, all that good stuff. Fan service, all that stuff. That's what it was. That's what it was all about, right? You rushed all this stuff with the CRM because it's filler. Jadis, filler. Major General Beal, filler. Thorn, filler. The CRM stuff is just filler. It's just kind of nonsense to fill in the gaps. We don't care about the CRM. We don't care about these people. We care about Rick, Michonne, Judith, RJ, Daryl, Carol, the, our people we know and love, the characters we know, right? But hey, I, I enjoyed it, you know? I'm, I'm not trying to knock it because it was a great series. The best spinoff yet. Now, if Daryl and Carol show is good, I hope it is. I hope it's amazing. I hope it's the same level, if not better than this. I don't know how it could, but it would have been interesting. Rick's got to learn a lot of information. He's got to learn about the CRM and the Commonwealth and whatever. And now there is a possible connection there, too. People are like, that opens up the, the stuff for Althea and uh, Isabel. Like, they're throwaway characters, too. Like, who cares about them? They're Fear the Walking Dead characters. Fear the Walking Dead characters are throwaway characters. So it's just kind of what it is, and um, it's over. I don't know why they would do another season, because The Ones Who Live is an epic love story with Rick and Michonne. It's done. We don't need a second season. What's the antagonist going to be for the second season? Major General Beale's son? That loser? Like, no. <laughs> like, what are we doing, right? You know? So, I don't know. Thank you, Diana, for the uh, super chat. I appreciate it. Um, but the big thing is, is like, we don't need, like, so the CRM is basically done because the council said people can come and go as they want. They don't need to be here anymore. You can come and go there too. So what's left for that stuff. I don't know. And I don't need anything else. Like I don't need any more story for that. But I do need Rick and Daryl to see each other again. And I think Andy Lincoln would want that to happen. And I think Norman Reed. I think the powers that be would want that to happen. And for the fans, we need that to happen. Like the ones who like. So do you guys like the ones who live? Did you think it was good? Do you think it was lived up to the hype and the weight? It was worth it? Because I do. I think it was good. I think it worked. I think it was good at all. You know, I think it was the Rick story that we needed to see. And it probably evolved with um, how it how it worked. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, the Dar the Daryl show is good too. You know, I so the spin-offs is like the Ones Who Live, The Daryl Show, Dead City. I can't even go low enough. But Fear the Walking Dead, Tales of the Walking Dead. You know, like World Beyond, all lower than that too. So it's like a middle of ranking though. But it, it, it's just, it, they did a good job. I, I think that it could have been longer than six episodes. But I feel like that's what World Beyond should have been. Two seasons of six episodes. And this should have been one season of ten episodes. And it wouldn't have had to feel so rushed. It wouldn't have had to be so much things there. But it, but it works. You know, at the end of there, too, it's definitely something that I'm excited to see what happens with the Daryl show now. Even more, I was anyway, because I like Norman Reedus. I like Daryl. I like, you know, what's the future of that. Now that Rick and Michonne are alive and well and secure... I don't know because the CRM was ultimately like the big bad, the Thanos of the Walking Dead universe, the CRM. And so we never saw Elizabeth Kublik, no mention of Heath, nothing to do with any of the characters from World Beyond, 
never saw or mentioned them at all. And so, yeah, didn't connect. It wasn't enough connections for us. And I guess they didn't want to connect with the things for it. Um, Cause I don't know how many people watched the world beyond versus, you know, the ones who live, but it was good. Like I said, it was, it was a good show. I just, um, it was a good thing for us fans. I mean, I know people are going to be hard on it and people are going to do this, but overall, I think it was a, it was a solid, good show. Now, you know, I don't, I'm, I wouldn't say the finale was bad. It could have been better. It could have been worse too, you know, but it was still good. And I think, um, I don't know. It, 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 people are going to break it down and say how it was rushed and how it was this. And it was rushed. I mean, they only give it six episodes. It had to be rushed. And they play with time and they play with this and some of the stuff that was, you know, kind of laughable. Um, but it's just like it was a good show. It filled in some of the gaps, filled in some of the void, filled in what it is. Now, I don't know what the future holds. I don't know if there ever will do a remake. Like George says at this point, I'd love HBO to remake The Walking Dead to be completely accurate to the comics. Like, I, I, I don't think we need that. I don't think we need a, an actual comic rendition of it exactly how it is. But I, I don't know. Like, like, after a while, like, I don't keep... I don't need more stuff after... The Walking Dead shows. I don't need a reboot. I don't need a remake. I, I don't need any of that personally. Because I don't like reboots and remakes. I like continuation of stories. Like the best example ever is Top Gun and Top Gun Maverick. It wasn't like they remade Top Gun with a new Maverick and a new Goose and a new Iceman and a new this and a new this and a new that. No, they continued the story. And if you can do that, with continuing the story of The Walking Dead in some way, shape, or form, then okay. But I don't need anything like that, too. Like Negan 1 says, The Walking Dead, The Next Generation. And you know how I feel about The Walking Dead and Star Trek and stuff like that, so I could see that happening, too. But, um, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's a good It's a good show. It's just the Walking Dead universe to see what happens going forward. Now, we'll have to see what happens with the Daryl show and uh, Dead City. And if we're going to get another spinoff, if we're going to get another show too. So, uh, Johnny, not bravo. What would you have done differently with the finale? Great question. That's a great question. I'll, I'll open that to everybody as well. But what I would have done is I probably would have wounded Rick that uh, he would have had to get medical attention and we wouldn't have known if he was going to live or not. And when he wakes up, he wakes up in the Commonwealth Hospital and it's a callback to the first episode and he comes in and there's Michonne, RJ, and Judith and that's how they are reunited. I wouldn't have rushed. I would have probably kept Major General Buell alive. He gets away to be out there and maybe he dies or not but then I don't know if their plan is to continue or not too but if they were going to do this the same thing I would have done it that way like if they were going to do this exact same thing CRM wiped out story complete I just would have had Rick get wounded and then we have a call back to the first so the first episode is Rick getting wounded being in the hospital and this time Rick could wake up in the hospital had the flowers on the bed, but now they're alive and everything's good. And then he's like, oh, crap. Was I dreaming this entire thing? And then he looks down and he, he's missing his left hand. And, you know, it just it just could have been a little bit more. But more money, more time, more effort, more, you know, all that stuff. But that's what I would have done, too, if, if you're going to keep the same storyline as well. Um, but, again, there's writing that is good and there's writing that's great. But there's time, there's money, there's budget, there's stuff that goes through. You know, maybe they, maybe this is what they had to do or they wanted to do all along. I, I don't know. 
So, Tim Simmons Q and A. How far away, Bry, do you think the kids were where no one heard that large helicopter came in and landed? I was expected others to come running to. Yeah, I mean, in a perfect world, we would think that other people would be there to be like, oh, crap, Rick's there. Judith's telling everybody that Rick and Michonne are coming back. So all the people we know and love come to see them. That would be really cool if Father Gabriel was there, too, you know, kind of thing, just because he was in the, in the series. But it would have been good to see that, too. Like, you're right. I agree. Like, I would assume that I would think more people would come there and say hi to Rick. And again, but again, time, budget, things, you know, like, are you really going to pay the cast to show up for not a long time? I, I don't know. You know, like for one episode, maybe they would. It would be great. But I don't think, like Judith could have mentioned it, like more people are on the way. And when they're hugging, yeah, I, it just would have been nice, nice a little thing. But again, it was. it is what it is. It, it served its purpose. It kind of did its thing. But um, so it was interesting when, when Andy Lincoln, it was Andy Lincoln, Dana Guerrero, and Gimple were talking inside the episode after the episode aired. Um, yeah, but Gabriel could have come back. Because you know, I would assume that Michonne talked to Judith way before they were coming. Like, like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna be there in a couple days. Right? Like I would I would assume I would assume that too. But the the thing of it is, is um but again, it's all hypothetical. It's not real life. So we don't know how far away the Commonwealth and Alexandria are. Are they two days away? Whatever. It, it's fine. But um it just would have been cool to see that a little bit more. And I uh I know where my train of thought was now. But I have to see where stuff's going to go coming out, you know, down the road with Rick and Michonne. But I think you can really have it, uh, have Rick and Michonne and even Morgan, throw Morgan in there too to say hi to Daryl when he shows up, you know. Phantom Deluxe says, hey, Bryce, sorry for coming too late. Didn't watch the episode yet, but watch some clips, including Rick fighting and stabbing Major General Beale. Did he die? Yeah. Major General, everybody dies but Rick and Michonne. In the CRM, Cascadia base, everyone is dead but Rick and Michonne. Like, and people were like, the red theory, the red theory, the red stuff doesn't make sense. Everywhere is red, bro. It's covered in red. Well, everybody's dead, so there you go. So the red theory strikes again, and it's more prominent in this series than any other aspect in The Walking Dead history. There's red all over the show. And everybody dies except Rick and Michonne. Like, so there you go. So it connects. But they had the callbacks, the connections, the good things with the the cat and then the cat and then Michonne and, and the pictures of Father Gabriel that Jadis painted and drew. And, and it was just like nice little moments here and there. But overall, it did what it had to do. Of course, it's rushed. Six episodes isn't enough for the characters that we know and love. But it did its job. It did a good thing with it. It was did a diff stuff. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I know what I was going to say. So inside the episode, Rick, oh, so Andy, Deny, and Scott Gimple, they talk about the episodes and all that too. So Andy Lincoln says something very interesting that I don't know if you guys picked up. So his ending of the show was like a certain movie called The Shawshank Redemption where the people were there and then they pan out from like a God's eye view or whatever is what he called it. Hmm. Who was heavily involved with the Shawshank Redemption? Frank Darabont, who was connected with The Walking Dead and doing this and doing that. So I thought that was very interesting. It's not said in the episode, but it's said at the end of the episode by Andy Lincoln himself. And so I was like, okay. I see what you're doing there. Nice little callback to Frank Darabont. Pretty cool. Fandom Deluxe Q&A. Don't you think Beale died so early? How are they going to build up the next major villain? I don't know how they're going to do it, Phantom Deluxe. I mean, I don't want another major villain. I don't want another show. I don't want another six spinoffs or three seasons of six episodes and all that stuff. I just don't. I don't need it. 
Now, if they replicated this type of writing and production and producing and storytelling and whatever, then yeah. But I don't need more story just for story. Like, I don't need the Walking Dead universe to continue on and enter any major way more than to wrap it up. Book end it. That's what it felt like. This felt like the book end story of Rick Grimes. Especially with the callbacks and Rick thinking about Shane and Terminus and the Claimers and Carl and Carl's death and that. It just came up time and time and time again. So we got to see kind of what they love to do in the finale type things is to wrap it up, like put all the things together. Where have we come? Boom, boom, boom. Recap, re, you know, just do what they love to do, like in, in the clip show type of things. And that's what they kind of did here. Atomic Q&A in the after the episode, Insider Andrew Lincoln said he wanted the reunion with the kids. So do you think wants to do other reunions or is he done playing the character? Yeah, I mean, he, he. I think he would. I don't know about Andy Lincoln. I think that he was done playing the character a while ago, and then they gave him enough money, and they did a lot of things, and gave him the executive producer credit, and all his involvement with it. I think if the if they, I think he would want to give it to the fans because I think Andy's a nice guy. I think he's just like a good-hearted guy. I think Deny may or may not be involved with anything there as well. But I think if they were like Andy. The way we're going to wrap up the Daryl show is to have you open the door for Daryl. And you're standing there. And everybody would love it. Right? If that doesn't happen, then I think they they dropped the ball and missed the boat. Because we got our reunion with the Grimes family. The Grimes family is complete. Rick, Michonne, Judith, and RJ. Done. Now we need Morgan, Daryl, and Carol. That's what we need. So, I don't know what their plan is. I don't know what the story is. I don't know what the budget and the money of stuff is. But I know it did really well. And I think it was exciting to watch. And I'm glad people enjoyed it. And it's something that needed to wrap the story up. It was a little rushed at the end. But it's really tough to do. You know, we think it's easy from an outside perspective to be like, just give them all the episodes they want and give them all the money they want and give them all the time they want. What if Denai Guerrero only has so many months? What if Andy Lincoln can only do so much? What if the, the, the filming, the locations, the scouting, the budget, and I don't know, there's all these other factors that happen when you film stuff and when you make stuff and when you create stuff. There's this an animation sitting in a room. It's time, budget, budget, energy, scheduling, just people being available or not. Like stuff happens, life happens. And it definitely feels like the six episodes were the three movies. Like it just feels like that's what it was going to be. First two, first up, first movie. Three and four, second, five and six, third movie. Now, it could have been a little bit more, could have been drawn out a little bit and whatever, but, and none of the episodes were over an hour. None of the episodes went two hours. You know, so, sorry, none of the episodes went an hour, so the movies would have been less than two hours. But that would have been a good movie. It probably, did, it probably would have done well. But, We can't be upset. We got what we got, and that's it. So moving forward, we'll have to see what it entails for the Rick and Michonne story, if there is going to be one. How does it connect with Daryl and Carol? So again, the next stuff we have is Daryl and Carol, and they're in France. So just come on back. Send a helicopter. You know, how can they get there? I don't know. Major General Beale does talk about spies and stuff that are all over the United States, but also the world. So could those people in the Daryl Dixon show be connected to Major General Beale stuff? We'll have to see. We'll have to see what they're going to do and what they're going to pull out of their butt for the storytelling or not. But at the end of the day, it worked. 
Um, it was a good series. It was a good six episodes, and I just wish we had more of it. That's all. Because seeing Rick and Michonne together, it just worked. It just worked on multiple levels. So at the end of the day, I'm excited to see what happens with the Daryl show. And it's still got me interested. But it ha ultimately, it has to connect with Rick. And Michonne, too. I would love to see Michonne because she was involved with Daryl to try and look for Rick. But we'll have to see how it plays out. But overall, guys, thank you for being here. I truly appreciate all the love and support. Thank you guys for the super chats. They mean the world to me. Happy Easter for those who celebrate it. I'll be back next Sunday to talk about more Walking Dead stuff. Maybe talk about the first look that will be airing tonight on uh, AMC with the, the show Parish. It's uh, the first look of uh, the Daryl and Carol show, the book of Carol. So ultimately, guys, I'll be back next Sunday. And remember, guys, with hard work, dedication, belief, and sacrifice, you can truly achieve your goals. Believe in yourself. You can do it no matter what it is. I'll be back next Sunday. Happy Easter, guys.